the, the talk over the last few year, months and the year is the quadricycle project and the RE60, which have successfully showcased at Lato, uh, last Auto Expo, now ready for commercial launch. How do you think it will change the uh, automotive, uh, the dynamics of the market? Uh, would, would you like to your existing three-wheeler customers to upgrade? Would you like the emergence of an all-new customer segment? How do you see? It's very difficult, uh, you know, when you create not just a new product, mm -hmm. but when you create a new category almost, mm -hmm. you know, because the quadricycle by definition is neither a three-wheeler nor a car. Mm -hmm. It is very difficult to um, hazard a guess about the prospects of a new category. It can do extraordinarily well and it can fall flat on its face. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say to an extent, uh, almost everyone I know had one opinion about the Nano before it was launched. Mm -hmm and quite a different one thereafter. Yeah. Even though Nano was not really creating a new category, but it was breaking new ground in mm -hmm. some respects, mm -hmm. at least in terms of price. So it's difficult to say. Having said that, I would say that definitely our focus first and foremost is on the upgradation of three-wheeler customers. Mm -hmm. uh, because all good strategy is to be first about defending what you have mm -hmm. before you try to acquire or add to what you have. Mm -hmm. So the three-wheeler business is terribly important to us. Mm. Unfortunately, to put it simply, there is no significant entry barrier to that business. You don't need a lot of money to develop a three-wheeler. You don't need a lot of technology to make a three-wheeler. You don't need a lot of um, uh, uh, elaborate arrangement to distribute a three-wheeler. The danger, therefore, is that in the absence of a significant entry barrier, the industry can be commoditized over time. Mm -hmm. So the question before us was that as the market leader, uh, not just in this country but in the world, what can we do to safeguard uh, this very uh, profitable uh, segment of which we are the leader? The simple answer to that was make the best three-wheeler possible. Mm -hmm. And then we asked ourselves uh, what could be the best three-wheeler? and it occurred to us that the best three-wheeler is a four-wheeler because um, when Gillette makes a razor with three blades and feels it has to do better, it makes one with five blades. Uh, so when we make a vehicle with three wheels and we have to make it better, it stands to reason that if we put a fourth wheel on it, people will feel this is more prestigious, this is more safe, this is more comfortable. Um, so that was what inspired uh, the four-wheeler. Along with four wheels, we have then put uh, not just four doors and a hard roof and seat belts and all of that on the vehicle, but we have really done some pioneering work on the engine. You know, I think <clears throat> given that it has fuel injection, water cooling, triple spark technology, uh, four valves uh, per cylinder, I think it's a state-of-the-art engine. It may be small, uh, but it is excellent. And therefore, it will deliver all that we have promised, which is essentially uh, twice the mileage and half the CO2 emission mm. of the typical small car. Mm. And I think when you make such a dramatic improvement, mm. you create a new category. Okay. So definitely we hope that not only in this market, in all our uh, global three-wheeler markets, it will inspire people to move up. Mm. Now the second question is whether we get new customers there. Where will they come from? Will people who are otherwise going to buy cars buy this? I don't think so, you know, because when somebody wants to buy a car, he, apart from the pride and prestige associated with it, he's looking for an intercity vehicle, he's looking for a vehicle that can do 100 kilometers an hour, he can, he's looking for a vehicle that can carry two suitcases, he's looking for a vehicle that can occasionally carry five people. Our vehicle is not built to that purpose. So I don't see people buying cars, uh, downgrading or downtrading uh, their choice uh, to this vehicle. Will people who are on two wheels, etc., come up to something like this? Honestly, I don't think so. <clears throat> the reason is simply this. If this vehicle is to be about one USP, it is about its, from a customer point of view, it is about its extraordinary fuel economy. Uh, we have always said that we have targeted a fuel economy in excess of 35 kilometers a liter, you know, which is double of what typically small cars do. Now, this fuel economy is meaningful only if you are going to drive the vehicle more than 100 kilometers a day. 
the average guy is not using his vehicle for more than 100 kilometers every single day. Yeah. The only guy who does that is a guy who uses it for commercial, commercial reasons. Yes. And that is why very humbly mm. uh, and very candidly from day one, we have said this is a taxi. Mm. You know, we have no uh, false notions mm. about it being a, a cute personal vehicle. Mm. Now in some markets of the world, uh, if it happens to gain acceptance mm. as a personal vehicle, we would be too delighted. Mm. Uh, I am told in Sri Lanka, mm. uh, a market that I have never visited, 87% of Bajaj three wheelers are used as personal vehicles. Mm. I am amazed. Obviously, our distributor there has done something outstanding in marketing terms. Mm. So, I would like to think that in a market like that, the RE60 will be also a personal mm. vehicle. But logically, mm. I don't think that that will happen in too many markets, mm. uh, including India. There are apparently over 5 million Bajaj three-wheelers of various vintages on the roads of India. Some are a year old, some are 10 years old. Mm. You know. So as far as I am concerned, <coughs> even if the RE60 serves to inspire only replacement of three-wheelers, mm. either the customer himself comes forward or maybe the the government of the state says switch to four wheelers. If over next 10 years, five million three wheelers will switch to the RE60, that's half a million vehicles a year. That is probably five times more than what we can make. Mm. So again, strategy is about really being focused mm. and focusing on one thing and getting it right. Mm. Our focus is on getting this four wheeler right as an outstanding alternative to upgrade from the three-wheeler. That's what we are focused on. And your view about uh, passenger car customers not opting for the R60 perhaps is an answer to those industry representatives who, who argue against the R60 because they, they feel that perhaps the industry will be taking a step back mm. by having this kind of vehicle mm. instead of going taking a step ahead, uh, mm. especially when it comes to safety and plying on the highway and mm. uh, not, not meeting the safety norms. Yeah. See, as far as uh, safety is concerned, we have been uh, very clear from day one in arguing this, that if the RE60, i.e. a four-wheeler is not safe, for whatever reason, the government must first ban all two and three-wheelers. Because by definition, two and three-wheelers are less safe than a four-wheeler, first and foremost. Uh, we have ourselves said proactively that just as two and three-wheelers are not permitted on expressways, for example, between Mumbai and Pune, the four-wheeler should not be permitted on the expressway. So, in no manner have uh, we suggested or acted uh, so as to in any way find our way around some regulations in terms of safety or emission. So, any such implication is, is completely false. Having said that, I would disagree while agreeing with you in the sense that I don't really think um, those car makers, let's say, who are arguing against us are doing so because they believe this vehicle is undesirable, mm. whether for reason of safety or whatever. Let's just call it undesirable. Um, and I'll be candid enough to say, I think they know this vehicle is very desirable. I think they see enormous potential for it, not just in this market elsewhere. Being our esteemed competitors, mm. Uh, it bothers them that we would be first to market and that is why from time to time you hear the argument that okay, let this category come into place, mm. but what's the hurry? Why not in 2015? Why not in 2016? Mm -hmm. Give everybody a fair chance to compete. They call it the level playing field. Okay. And my response to that is, this is not the meaning of level playing field. This is punishing innovation mm. and rewarding complacency. Whoever it is that is objecting, why did you not make this move first? Mm. When Bajaj has made it, it has taken enormous risk upon itself. Mm. I have a huge development team. Mm. I have vendors who invested in this. I have a factory that is standing in Aurangabad. That's the risk I took three or four years back when I started this development. As you yourself mentioned, Bajaj showcased this vehicle two years ago. Mm. So for two years, it's an open secret. 
why did you not start development two years back? Hmm. That means you are part of a mentality that first policy must be thrust upon me. Then I will act hmm. accordingly. Hmm. I don't think this is how we are supposed to think. Hmm. We belong to the mentality that do something new and policy will follow if what you do makes sense. Asking us to wait now hmm. is like Nokia telling Steve Jobs, hmm. hang on, I need time to develop a smartphone. Hmm. You know, If tomorrow, let's say, a pharma company were to come up with a pill, hmm. if you take this pill, your cancer is cured. Hmm. Now, what are you going to do? Are you going to tell him to wait hmm. till every other pharma company has three years to develop it? Or are you going to tell him to go ahead? I think what is important for society is more important than what is important for some companies. This is about innovation. This is about first to market. This is about differentiation. This is not about level playing field in the way they are suggesting. So, uh, you know, I say this very strongly because I think uh, their arguments are completely misleading. Uh, and I don't think, I think I will be proved right in two, three years time when you will see all those naysayers hmm. enter the market with a quadricycle. And also, uh, since I'm talking to you now, I would also like to get uh, the correct uh, picture. Is it also correct that Bajaj Auto at one point had, uh, was not so convinced about such a uh, concept when uh, another OEM had uh, showcased a prototype of it, I think yeah. in the early tw 2000s, yeah. and uh, perhaps Bajaj Auto also objected to it then? Yeah. This is uh, completely untrue. You know, I'll tell you why. Because uh, the incident you are referring to about 8-10 years back is completely um, different from what is happening now in the sense that this, let's say, midway mm. point of the quadricycle mm. between a three-wheeler and a car okay. can be approached in two di directions. Mm. You can either make a much better three-wheeler or you can make a very cheap car. These two approaches are different. Although I was not part of those discussions, I think it was in 2004 or so. So both at association level or outside of it, I was not part of it. But from what I remember, that was about making a cheap car. You know, that typically cars cost so much. Uh, if we are allowed to dispense with certain regulatory requirements, um, etc., certain norms, etc., we can make the car cheaper. Uh, that was that proposal. This is not our proposal. Our proposal is not to make a cheap car. Our proposal is to make a premium three-wheeler. So from my point of view, on a three-wheeler, whether I put three wheels, four wheels, or even ten wheels mm -hmm. is not important. Because wheels is not the problem. Mm -hmm. The problem is what the vehicle does. Mm -hmm. If you measure the width of the RE60 mm -hmm. at 1400 millimeters, it is exactly the same as a three-wheeler. Mm -hmm. I have not tried to make a bigger vehicle. Hmm. If you look at the overall length of the vehicle, from the front tire to the rear, in fact, if I am not wrong, RE60 is a little smaller perhaps than a three-wheeler. Hmm. If you look at my engine hmm. at 216cc, it's a pipsqueak engine. Hmm. If, you, if you look at the inside of the vehicle, it's very humble. Hmm. By no stretch of imagination, is it anything like a car? Hmm. Most importantly, what is the plank on which I positioned this concept at Auto Expo. I did not say, I am making a car at half the price. I did not say, here is my one lakh car. Mm. In fact, I don't believe in that approach. Mm. I said, here is a four-wheeler, mm. which is twice the mileage and half the emission. Mm. That is my plank. So my contention is, Bajaj Auto is trying to do something today, which is completely different, qualitatively. Mm from what was attempted 10 years back. If tomorrow somebody stands up and says, I can make a cheaper motorcycle, mm. if you remove these, 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 these requirements, safety or emission or lighting or whatever it is, of course I'm going to oppose it. Mm. And if tomorrow it is said, let us make a cheaper car by removing this, this, again I will oppose it. Mm. Because it is not fair to, to the rest of the car makers mm. who are all developing products mm. with certain assumptions. But if you want to make a three-wheeler better, I am all for it. Mm. But then it must remain essentially a three-wheeler mm. in terms of its size, in terms of its weight. A typical, today in India, there are three-wheelers that weigh as much as 500 kilos. Mm. 
the RE60 weighs 400 kilos. The RE60's maximum speed is only 70 kilometers an hour. So it is not a car and therefore it is not right to say that the situation of today is in any way similar. It could not have been more different than what happened eight years back. Thanks for clarifying that. And also the other four-wheeler project that I would like to understand about is the, the uh, commercial vehicle that uh, Bajaj Auto, the R&D was working on. Uh, why has it been delayed? Is it because the d market dynamics have changed or perhaps yeah. you have managed to find a better solution than the one which you had almost finished working on? Who is best placed to make a four-wheeler? A three-wheeler maker. Mm -hmm. Who is best placed to make a small goods carrier, a truck maker. Mm. So Tata's success with the ACE is not the success of just a product. Mm. It is again a marketing success. Mm. Because people associate Tata's not with cars, mm. with trucks, Tata Motors, with trucks. So when a truck maker makes a smaller truck, mm. people are delighted mm. because they can suddenly buy something which suits their requirement. With a peace of mind. And uh, they, are, they have assurance. Mm. You know? Now, if, if I were to make something similar, mm. it would be a very similar price because everybody's truck is going to weigh one ton and have a twin cylinder mm. diesel engine and a cab and four wheels and all that. Now, for a similar price, why would you buy a Bajaj truck? Mm. You, know? uh, you would not buy it. So that is why I said in the beginning, what you don't do is more important than what you do. So we shall that project. And is that also another reason why uh, you are not so bothered, uh, not so affected by the way things didn't work out in the Bajaj or Renault Nissan uh, discussions? Or is it because the project, as you foresaw it, was not profitable enough for you to commercialize? Well, it's a combination of the things we already spoke about mm. in the sense that um, the Renault ULC, as Mr. Gohan mm. called it, started off being similar to the concept of a Nano, mm. a cheaper car. And as we progressed with the project, it became very clear to me mm. that uh, this was not going to be profitable. Um, and uh, I then proposed to Mr. Gohan in November 2009 that this uh, project has, has to be reoriented. Mm. And instead of trying to make a cheaper car, we need to make a superior three-wheeler almost. And from there came the idea of the four-wheeler, mm. i.e. the quadricycle. Uh, he was okay with it at that time. So the project was reoriented mm. in November 2009. And that gave me a lot of confidence and comfort because suddenly when I'm making a better three-wheeler, mm. I'm suddenly in my zone, mm. so to speak. You know, I'm not crossing my Lakshman Rekha mm. where some Ravan will come and pick me up and take me away somewhere else. So I am operating within my boundaries. Mm. And then as the vehicle developed, it became, I think, increasingly clear to Renault and Nissan, uh, primarily Renault because they were dealing with us most of the time, that okay, this is a four-wheeler, it's an outstanding three-wheeler, it's a nice four-wheeler, but it's not a car. Mm. And they are a car company. So I think that is how gradually over time their interest faded. So once again, uh, you know, I think good strategy should be self-evident. Mm. You should not have to explain it. Mm. It should be simple. It should be obvious. You know? And I think the strategy became obvious mm. that if it's a cheap car, to mm. aap mm. because you are a car maker, it's not my cup of tea. If it's an excellent three-wheeler, he said the same to me effectively, to mm. aap I am a car company. This is not my cup of tea. So it was as simple as that. That explains your business strategies. But I think these are also rooted in your beliefs, which uh, from my understanding, as I know you, is a good blend of uh, traditional Indian practices hmm. uh, like uh, yoga hmm. or Ayurveda, hmm. and also your strong belief in the homeopathy, um, yeah. uh, science, science of homeopathy. How do you f uh, no, blend these two and hmm. uh, no, uh, apply it in various aspects of your life? Well, Starting with business, since you were yeah, let, talking it. Let me put it like this, you know, I mean, I learned the hard way that there is no science in management. Management is all about hindsight. Mm. Management is all about anecdotes. Management is, what, is about what is fashionable today. In the last 20 years, I've heard so many concepts. I've heard world-class manufacturing, just in time. Mm. Kaizen. I've heard blue oceans, red oceans, Six Sigma. I've heard about lean manufacturing. I have heard about the seven habits of effective people. I have heard about the seven hats. Uh, I have heard about the bottom of the pyramid, 
uh, even though I still don't understand what is the meaning of bottom of the pyramid. Mm-hmm. Every time somebody says bottom of the pyramid, I ask them, to jara samjhao yaar, what is bottom of pyramid? Mm-hmm. I have never received an explanation so far. So what I find is that so-called management people talk all these terminologies, mm-hmm. but they don't mean anything. You know? Whereas, speaking of yoga, I mean, yoga is not something you talk, it is something you do. Mm-hmm. And uh, I am very fortunate because in Pune where I live is uh, Guruji B.K.S. Iyengar who is considered one of the world's greatest exponents uh, of yoga. And of course he has said many things about yoga. But one of the things he has said is uh, yoga is alignment. Yoga is alignment between one part of the body and the other. Yoga is alignment between body and mind. Yoga is alignment between you and something higher than you. In a way, strategy is about that. Strategy is about alignment of the company with the customer. It is about alignment of the organization with its suppliers and dealers. It is about the alignment within the company of the front end and the back end, i.e. the brand, which is like the restaurant, mm. um, and the, uh, the R&D, which is like the kitchen. I mean, for example, when I have a brand like Boxer, which is a rough and tough workhorse motorcycle to be sold in Africa, it needs one type of approach. It has to be made to one kind of specification. If I make it the way I make a Pulsar, it will never make money. On the other hand, when I make KTMs at Chakhan, it has to be aligned to different thinking, different specification, different suppliers, different standards, different machine tools, different quality specs, etc. If I make the KTM like a boxer, it will never sell, you know. So there are many principles I found in yoga, uh, which can be applied uh, in one's work. Similarly, in homeopathy, the most fundamental principle is individualization. What it means is that at a basic level, we are all the same. All human beings are the same. But the reason we react differently to the same thing, is because intrinsically we are individuals and we know that. Mm. I don't like your hairstyle, Mm. you don't like my shoe, Mm. we like different things when it comes to eating. Uh, So all our choices are very individualistic. So that's why we say, I am an individual, Mm. you know. So as somebody said, what makes us who we are is not what we have in common with others. Mm. It is what we have in uncommon with others, you know. So, if we try to translate the principle of individualization of homeopathy into business, we can say individualization is specialization. As much as a human being is individualized, companies should be specialized. I mean, think about a doctor. Who has greater esteem in your mind? A doctor who attends to everything from head to toe or a doctor who is a specialist of something? I mean, God forbid, if you have a cardiac issue tomorrow, you go to a heart specialist, you go to ENT specialist, you go to a gastroenterologist, you go to a nephrologist, you so and so. If you want to have a good meal, you don't go to a buffet restaurant, you go to a specialized restaurant. Why does Indigo do so well when everybody in aviation sector does so badly? Because Indigo specializes on one segment. Why does Harley-Davidson make more money than most car makers do? Hmm. Even though they sell millions of cars and Harley sells only 200,000 bikes. Hmm. Because they specialize. Specialization is the name of the game in an evolved market. Hmm. See, people say that, but it wasn't like that. In an evolved market, uh, for example, some markets of Africa, hmm. you can get away with anything. Hmm. Because there is not enough competition. But when markets evolve, what does that mean? That means when there is a lot of competition, Mm. you have to specialize. Mm. And if you want to specialize, there is no better place to learn from than homeopathy. Mm. Because homeopathy is all about individualization. And Dr. Hanuman, the founder of homeopathy, wrote a wonderful book called The Organon of Medicine, where he has laid down 300 principles based on individualization. How should a doctor cure a patient? So we are a homeopathic family Mm. uh, and I believe in homeopathy for myself, for my family, for my friends, etc. And I said to myself, if I can trust homeopathy 
with the wellness of people who are dear to me then why i cannot trust homeopathy with the wellness of my company which is very important to me but not as important as people mm. at the end of the day so if you can trust it for personal wellness you can trust it from corp for corporate wellness so we derived or translated 300 principles or aphorisms uh, from from homeopathy into working principles of management okay. uh, for the management of our strategy of our mm. company so even if you talk to some of my colleagues mm. and ask the same question uh, they will give you in their own way some examples mm. uh, of uh, how they apply this now this is not to say that we are homeopaths mm. uh, you know uh, but uh, we are homeo quacks uh, in that sense uh, but definitely we have learned certain principles yes. uh, which have been useful to us and definitely much more useful than anything you can learn at harvard business school yeah. try googling the first law of management it's not there google the second law of management it's not there mm. ask the professors and the business consultants who claim to be the management gurus ki aapke management mein aisa koi bible hai gita hai quran hai which has stood the test of time the bible is the bible after mm. how many centuries yes the gita the quran the book on homeopathy and the will remain so physics yes. chemistry biology these are science mathematics 1 mm. plus 1 is 2 only it can never change is it so in management which is that book it just comes and goes in 6 months mm. so i thought it is better not to it is like shifting sand you know mm. i thought it is better i need some firm ground to stand on mm. i found it in homeopathy and yoga thank you very much rajiv for sharing your views in a very thank frank you. manner and wish you all the best with your thank global you, strategy sir. thank you thanks and so that much. brings us to the end of this special episode thank you for watching